You know, you can always tell which way a nation is headed just by looking at its leader. A godly ruler helps a nation flourish, but a wicked one brings it to ruin. That inescapable reality is on full display in the book of 1 Samuel. Hey guys, welcome to Scripture in 6 Minutes. If you're committed to reading God's Word, we're committed to helping you understand it. Now in today's episode, we're talking about giants and kings and close calls and unlikely heroes and even more unlikely victories, the book of 1 Samuel. Now this book is simple to understand and it's jam-packed with awesome stories, beginning with the one on the very first page, the miraculous birth of a baby boy named Samuel. Now, not only was Samuel a blessing to his parents, his mother in particular, but he would prove to be a powerful leader in Israel's future as well. And Samuel's arrival on the scene wasn't a moment too soon. The Philistines, uh, those dirty, rotten, no good, low lowlifes we met in earlier parts of the Bible, yeah, they're back at their old tricks again. Okay, so they roll into town, attack God's people, and beat them up pretty badly, even going so far as to capture the Ark of the Covenant, that box that symbolized God's presence on earth among his people. Now, this defeat leads the Israelites to ask God for a king because, you know, government fixes everything, right? Well, the people's desire for a human king breaks God's heart because he's supposed to be their king, remember? Nonetheless, God gives his people a talented and dashing young man named Saul. Unfortunately, before Saul you know, can even have his royal robes custom fitted, his reign takes a nosedive that he never really fully recovers from. And as Saul continues to sin, God rejects him as king. In fact, God even goes so far as to say he regretted making Saul king in the first place. Ouch. But just when you think that Jonathan, King Saul's remarkable son, is going to step in and save the day, well, we meet David. And immediately we realize this shepherd boy, yo, he's the one, okay? Uh, the prophet Samuel, he anoints David as the new king, even though the old king's still around. And while the oil is still dripping off this young boy's chin, he goes out and slays a giant. Literally. But that's just the first of David's many military exploits, okay? This young man's going to be so awesome on the battlefield, they're going to write songs about him. Literally. <laughs> and across the remaining pages of 1 Samuel, we fall in love with this courageous and godly and skilled and humble warrior poet. Because David, he's the real deal. Now sadly, Saul becomes so jealous of David that he tries to kill him. Multiple times, in fact. And so David flees as Saul pursues him all over the country. And while Saul is sidetracked by his jealous rage and increasing sin, the Philistines rearm for war and launch an attack. Well, by then, King Saul is so far outside of God's will that he's completely defeated. And the book of 1 Samuel comes to a close on a dark and an ominous note. King Saul, and tragically his son Jonathan, they're killed in war, and the Israelites are defeated so badly, they abandon their homes to the invading Philistines. Yeah, it's grim. But this is exactly what Proverbs 29.2 warns us about. Under a godly leader like Samuel, Israel thrived. But under a terrible leader like King Saul, Israel suffered. And that's why God gave his prophet Samuel some advice when he sent him to find King Saul's replacement. See, Samuel was starstruck by Eliab, David's oldest brother, but God said, Do not look upon his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You see, God was looking for a person who had a heart like his own, and he found that person in David. Now, not everybody has that kind of heart, that's for sure, but everyone will pay a price when the wrong leader comes to power. Now, this might be the biggest lesson in the book of 1 Samuel, but it's not the only lesson in the book of 1 Samuel. This book offers us more, much more, in fact. For instance, we see that God is mighty and yet gracious. His power is openly wielded against the proud and the unrighteous like Eli and his, and his wicked sons Hophni and Phinehas and Goliath and the rest of the Philistines. 
and of course King Saul. But at the same time, God also defends and elevates the humble like Hannah or Samuel or Jonathan and of course David, right? But the tumultuous storyline of 1 Samuel also shows us that God remains faithful to us in spite of our sin. He doesn't ever break his promises to us just because we break our promises to him. And the good news is that's not going to change in 2 Samuel or for that matter, ever. <laughs> Praise God. So let me offer you just one simple guide as you read through the book of 1 Samuel, okay? And it's this. Be very careful how you interpret these stories of epic triumph, okay? The point of the stories in 1 Samuel is not for you to go out and try to be your own hero, okay? The point of these stories is for you to trust God as your hero. Because nowhere in the Bible, 1 Samuel included, are we encouraged to go out and try and save ourselves. We can't do that. All of us need a Savior and his name is Jesus. And he's gonna come on the scene about a thousand years after David as the son of David, not merely to be the king of Israel, but to be the king of the entire world. You see, David was a man after God's own heart, but Jesus, well, he actually had God's heart. Okay, so there you have it. Now, David's story, it's red hot right now, but it's also just getting started. We're going to see an even wider view of his life and service to God in 2 Samuel. But first things first, enjoy the wonderful stories in the book of 1 Samuel, and then join us right back here for our very next episode of Scripture in 6 Minutes.